Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Tuesday, April 11th, 2017, and I am Emily Parker. And I am Matt Hill. Today's top stories include a murder-suicide in California. And North Korea's high tensions with military actions. This and more coming up next on Texan TV. In campus news, Charleston's 12th annual film festival will be held Thursday, April 27th in the OA Grant building. Admission will be free and there will be a list of entertaining short films to see. If you have a short, you can still submit your film to Dr. Robert Anderson of the Communications Department. So come out and support local filmmakers at the Charleston Purple and White Film Festival. In local news, according to the Stephenville Empire Tribune, the Cross Timbers Emergency Responders will officially change their name to the Erath County First Responders. We take you to Quanicia Fraser reporting from the courthouse. Thank you. Captain Matt Boyd spoke about this new name change to Erath County Commissioners on Monday. Although the new name has not yet been announced, Boyd says he feels that this new name change will help people of the area have a better understanding of who exactly the Cross Timbers Emergency Responders serve. The Cross Timbers Emergency Responders is an all-volunteer organization in Erath County. They respond to medical emergencies, traffic accidents, injuries, and any, in, any incident that requires EMS. Boyd also says that they provide basic life support and advanced life support as first responders in Erath County. In addition to all of that, the organization also provides assistance to local fire departments, although they do not actually participate in firefighting. Quanisia Fraser reporting here in front of the Erath County Courthouse. Thank you. Thank you, Quanisia. And now today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. In state news, this Monday, a federal judge ruled that the voter ID law designed by Republicans was deliberately designed to disadvantage minorities and diminish their voting power. This is the second finding of the Texas election law being discriminatory. A separate court ruled earlier that Republicans racially gerrymandered congressional districts when they drew voting maps in 2011, the same year that voter ID laws were passed. This raises the possibility that Texas is going to be stripped of the right to unilaterally change election laws receiving federal permission, also known as preclearance. Despite this finding in the 2016 presidential election, hundreds of Texas voters were able to provide a sworn in testament instead of a photo ID. In national news, San Bernardino, California has recently been subjected to a school shooting. The husband of San Bernardino Elementary School teacher shot and killed his wife and an eight-year-old student and injured a nine-year-old student before turning himself uh, in or turning the gun on himself in a special education classroom yesterday. Police said police have also identified the dead as student Jonathan Martinez, special education teacher Karen Smith, and gunman Cedric Anderson. Authorities reported Anderson and Smith were estranged but have not yet determined why the husband and wife were estranged after only being married for three months. Police are still investigating the motive behind the shooting. In international news, North Korea is vowing tough counteractions for any military moves following the United States, sending the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier and its battle group to waters off the Korean Peninsula. Tensions are high on the divided peninsula due to the U.S.-South Korean war games currently underway and their recent ballistic missile launches by North Korea. North Korea has long claimed the U.S. is preparing some kind of assault against it and justifies their nuclear weapons as defensive in nature. A spokesman for Korea's foreign ministry said his nation will hold the U.S. wholly accountable for the catastrophic consequences of their actions. U.S. Navy ships are a common presence in the Korean region. Saturday night, the Pentagon said that a Navy carrier strike group was moving towards the Western Pacific Ocean to provide more of a physical presence in the region. For more of today's national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. Speaking at the G7 meeting in Italy, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson strongly condemned the chemical attack in Syria. Tillerson questioned Russia's involvement in the attack and urged that we cannot let this happen again. Turkish media reports that a large explosion occurred in Turkey's mainly Kurdish city of Diyarbakir. Plumes of smoke were seen from buildings. The cause of the explosion is not yet known. What's widely reported to be the biggest flower in the world could be seen in bloom at the National Botanical Garden in Belgium. The the flower, which is known as the Titan Arum, is notorious for the unpleasant smell it exudes and only lasts for a few days. And elephants sprayed motorists and passers-by with water in Thailand to welcome in the Buddhist New Year Songkran. 
The holiday known as the world's biggest water fight is the longest and most important holiday of the year in Thailand. Emily Roseman, Associated Press with AP News Minute. In sports, brought to you by TarletonSports.com, Tarleton Volleyball has released its 2017 schedule, which begins the season with a home tournament on September 1st and an invitation to the Colorado Premier Challenge, one of the most prestigious tournaments in Division II Volleyball. In baseball, the Texans lost to Eastern New Mexico 9-8 due to an eighth inning rally where the Greyhounds scored three points to take the lead going into the ninth inning. The baseball team will host University of Texas Permian Basement Thursday at 3 p.m. Texan softball also dropped both games of their doubleheader to Texas Women's and will travel to Lubbock next Tuesday to face Lubbock Christian University. Charleston Track and Field competed in the David Noble Relays, hosted by Angelo State Saturday, and came away with three first place finishes. Esmeralda Fuentes, excuse me, Esmeralda Fuentes placed first in the women's 1500 meter run. Caitlin Huckabee also picked up a gold in the 5000 meter run, and Quentin Lasseter finished first in the 5000 meter men's run. And now for the weather from the National Weather Service, we go to Quanisha Fraser. Today's high is 72 degrees with a slight chance of thunderstorms. Tonight it will be mostly cloudy with the low in the upper 50s. This has been a production of the Texan TV News, a product of the Texan News Service from the Charleston State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Watch us live on Aperture Channel 2.1 in the residence halls at 1230 weekdays. And if you live off campus, tune in to Northland Cable Channel 9. You can follow the Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website at www.texannews.net for all your latest local, state, national, and international news. Today's broadcast was produced by Quinesia Fraser, Haley Watson, and Austin Farrar. Have, Have a, a wonderful, wonderful day, day Texans. Texans.